In this video I'm going to be replacing my boat trailer springs and this is more of just a tutorial of how I did it. I'm not showing or stating that this is uh, how the way you should do it or everyone's springs uh, are going to be followed this way or following even these steps. It's more of just uh, here's how the process I did it. Uh, so I disconnected all of the audio uh, in the background. You're going to hear the air compressor coming on and off quite a bit so I decided just to do a, a voiceover. Uh, as I go through this. Uh, the first steps there obviously as you can see I've got the, the tra trailer jacked up on uh, two different jack stands. I've got it up uh, fairly high. Uh, you gotta make sure you get it up high enough so that when you do take the U-bolts off the trailer axle that the axle itself can drop down far enough uh, that you can get uh, all the hardware out and etc. Uh, now at the start of the video you sort of saw me there take off the, uh, the center cap uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove the center castle nut, washer, and bearing, and then just pull the entire wheel and uh, tire assembly off as one unit, opposed to taking off the uh, the lug nuts. I find it's a little bit easier if you're just you know repacking your trailer bearings, or if you just need to go ahead and and get in there as opposed to taking off each individual uh, lug nut. It just makes the process a little bit easier. Um, some of the tools you can see I'm dropping down on the floor. Uh, I, I use some air tools, so uh, definitely a, an impact wrench of some sort. Uh, as you can see there, I've got a, uh, a pneumatic driver, uh, sort of a chisel driver, and you'll you'll need those for uh, driving in the new bolts. Uh, the new bolts near the neck of the shaft are going to be. Uh, splined so that they seat into the hangers uh, in, in a more sort of secured fashion uh, as opposed to some sort of a you know welding I guess they don't want those spinning on you or anything like that they'd be pretty difficult to hammer in and I just don't want to keep beating on material um, I guess in my younger days I probably would have done it but uh, it make it a little bit easier just using a pneumatic driver just to push those bolts uh, all the way through and you're not sort of you know jarring the entire uh, you know hardware system and, and hangers on the trailers and whatnot. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and remove the uh, uh, the center pin uh, that holds the uh, sort of the castle nut in place. You will need to probably replace those. I don't recommend um, you know reusing them. I have in the pinch but uh, it's not really good practice to do. So now I'm just cleaning off some of the grease and uh, then I'm going to go ahead and pull out the uh, unscrew the castle nut. Okay here so I've got everything off. I'm just pulling the tire off. Like I said <clears throat> it makes things a lot easier um, when you're trying to work on things like this like repack bearings. Uh, it comes off as one unit. Now the one thing I do recommend is obviously just go ahead and lay out everything, your bearings, um, castle nut, the washer, um, your, uh, your bearing buddy or, or center cap, grease cap, whatever you might be using on your trailer. Uh, lay them out in sort of the order that they need to go back on so it's sort of easy to remember. Uh, I also recommend that you sort of put these on like a piece of you know, cardboard or you know, some towel of some sort and then cover them up and get them away from where you're going to be doing the work. Uh, typically this type of job there's going to be a lot of rust and metal flake uh, you know coming off from just you know undoing the bolts and you know working with things. You may have to get a wire brush out to clean things up and you know those little metal flakes that you're going to be you know removing uh, if they get into some of the grease uh, that you're not aware of that the trailer bearings uh, might be sitting nearby it's probably not you know those trailer bearings are not going to last very long and you may damage uh, the spindle as well so you know usually cover them up and get them you know away from where you're going to be doing the job um, and then bring them back once you're done okay here I move the uh, camera angle a little bit I'm going to be removing the four uh, nuts that are uh, underneath the, the the axle there, the U-bolts that hold the uh, <clears throat> trailer springs uh, to the axle themselves. Um, this is pretty straightforward. Just go ahead and remove them. 
like I said, with the pneumatic air tools <clears throat> to make things, you know, very easy to, to remove them. These things are rusty, uh, so it's, you know, if you're using just a regular ratchet, uh, it, it is definitely doable, but, uh, you know, this is going to take a time to run through it. Uh, now, the other thing I will note with all these bolts, I used, uh, you know, WD-40, sprayed everything down, uh, I'd say about three to four days before I even tackled the job, um, just to let things sit and uh, soak up so that the penetrating oil would remove the content uh, from all the rust and what, make things come off, come off easier. So here I'm just removing the bolts. All right, so once I got the bolts removed, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, fast forward and we're going to remove the bolt out of the, the rear top hanger. Okay, so what we're doing here is just removing the, the rearmost top bolt hanger. You don't need to do the lower one because it'll just come out in the assembly. Uh, just go ahead and make sure you got a good secure socket and uh, you know, go ahead and pull the bolt off. A breaker bar would do, you know, easy well. I'm just using a, uh, a ratchet here. Now, in that case, that particular top bolt, it came out uh, pretty easy. It just backed itself right out. I could pull it straight out. Uh, some of the other ones are not so easy to do. Now it looks like, like I fast forward a little too far. I already uh, removed the front bolt as well. And um, it's the same process. There really isn't anything earth shattering that you missed. And then I just moved the leaf spring out. These leaf springs are about, uh, I'd say, six, six years old. And uh, this boat trailer had sort of a unique history. Um, it was originally manufactured and, and uh, purchased to a gentleman down in the uh, Miami area. Uh, Miami, Florida, and uh, it was used there for I think the majority of its life. I'd say about five years, and uh, then he moved to Arizona, and he took the boat with him out there. I don't think the boat really got used that much out in Arizona. I don't really think, honestly, it got used much in Miami with the number of hours it had on it when I bought it. Um, once it was in uh, Miami, or I'm sorry, Arizona. Uh, then there was a, another gentleman that was in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, that bought it from him in Arizona, and he had the trailer and boat shipped back to North Carolina, so back to the East Coast. Um, he used it, I don't know, probably a half a dozen times from what he told me, and uh, then he decided to sell it. He looks like he was more of just a, a boating enthusiast where he'd buy buy boats, use them for a little bit, and sell them. Um, so he was uh, just a person that liked to be out in the water and and uh, really enjoyed boats and just buying and selling them. Um, again, I don't think he really used it that much by just the number of hours. I think when I bought it, um, there was 30 plus hours on it, uh, on the uh, on the boat, and it was a, it's a two, 2012 uh, model. So, you know, everything that I've looked at when I went through and owning it for now a year, I would say that those hours uh, would have been correct. But anyways, um, you know, sitting around with the, the leaf springs, not sort of coating them with some sort of a, a rust inhibitor or um, spraying them down with WD-40 or something like that every every year, you can tell that they were definitely uh, rusty. And uh, I used the, the, the boat, at least last year, I trailered up and down or at least south towards uh, the Outer Banks and uh, there's one lake that we go to quite often um, is about two hours away and so I just wanted to feel a little more secure with uh, a new set of springs. So what I'm doing here is just taking a wire brush knocking off any of the, the scale uh, or loose uh, steel pieces that have rusted just over the years and this is what I was talking about earlier with you know just covering up uh, your your bearings any of the, the grease that you plan to put back that's in those bearings that are nearby, you want to make sure that they're sort of, you know, covered up and away from uh, the work material. You just don't want to get any any of those little rust pieces uh, anywhere near 
any of the contents that need to go back on that spindle. Uh, it's just going to, I think, screw things up for you if you do. All right, so here I'm sort of just checking things out, and I'm looking to sort of reassemble and uh, just taking a look at the hardware and just ensuring how it's going to go back. Even though it is simple, I'm just sort of taking a look at some of the existing bolts and the new bolts. Uh, all of the hardware that I got for this, I'll go ahead and post in the, uh, the description of the video. Um, this is just a standard 3,500 pound, uh, I believe it's a Dexter axle. Um, I believe these are extremely common. This is a Magic Tilt manufacturer uh, trailer uh, that's on this particular boat. So a lot of the parts, I think even from utility trailers, are going to be pretty darn similar um, from the little bit of research I did. Uh, online with looking at parts and, and whatnot. Uh, E-Trailer was pretty helpful as far as just confirming at least the parts I was going to get were going to work with uh, themselves um, and there weren't going to be any uh, any surprises. So we'll fast forward here a bit. I'm just going to spray down some of the bare metal parts uh, with some Rust-Oleum just to protect them a little bit further. Uh, at the end of the video I'm going to spray down everything with some fluid film um, fluid film is a basically a rust inhibitor. It's used primarily for um, individuals that do a lot of snow plowing in the winter, and you want to go ahead and protect, you know, all of the hardware from all the salt uh, that gets exposed to your bare metal, even painted metal surfaces. So it's extremely well uh, salt inhibitor. Uh, if you read the, des the description, it's also used for marine applications. It's pretty cheap. It's, I want to say, like $9 at Lowe's. Um, that's even cheaper than what I could find on, like, Amazon, for example. But uh, I've used it a couple times in the past uh, for applications where I really needed to make sure that the, the steel stayed, you know, intact and didn't rust any further. Um, and it's, it's a good product. Like I said, all of the guys that I know that do any snow plowing, they spray down everything, their plows, all the nuts, bolts. Um, you just don't want to make sure you get it on any rubber components, um, I think, or plastic. It's, it doesn't really work well with that material, but any type of, any type of metal that's going to be exposed to the elements, it's, it's a great product for that. All right, so fast forwarded a bit here, what we're going to be doing is uh, Clearly putting the rear spring back on. Uh, I've already reattached the, the, the rear hanger uh, brackets into the leaf spring themselves. So now I'm just working towards putting that top uh, bolt in and uh, feeding it through with the pneumatic driver. I'll try to keep things short. Um, definitely I remember watching some of these videos before I tackled the job. And, you know, there is just a lot of dialogue and not a lot of work being done. So. I'll try to uh, streamline this a bit further as we continue on. Alright, so I've got the rear uh, bolt through, everything's lined up, so now it's just a matter of, uh, you know, pulling up <coughs> the, uh, the leaf spring uh, through the U-bolt so it uh, attaches in the bottom of the axle and then just feeding the, the bolt through there on the top eyelet. Um, here's just sort of an example of what the old um, leaf spring look like compared to the new one which is just in front of it and then some of the hardware in regards to the condition and rust it had on it so not too terribly bad but it definitely had some scale that um, just for all right so as you can see there I've got everything all right so as you can see there I've got everything lined up I've got the uh, the front eyelet bolt through now I'm just tightening up uh, the uh, the, uh, the nuts on the U-hanger bolts there. Now these I think specify different torque settings for uh, the different thickness and obviously your application. Uh, I think I was using, I think these are 9 16 U-hanger bolts if I'm not mistaken and I think they required anywhere from I want to say the range was 50 to 90 foot-pounds but uh, there's uh, links on Google uh, that you can sort of look that up to sort of determine not only the application but the size of the U-bolts and what the recommended spec uh, foot-pounds are for those. Uh, for me, I'll probably just go ahead and put another set of nuts on the bottom just so they don't back out. Um, it's just one of those things where a few extra cents is just going to, you know, if whatever reason they were to back out, you know, another nut there is going to prevent that 
and um, usually when you're boating you're not you do carry some tools in your truck just in case but you know it just a little bit of extra insurance is going to make sure it doesn't ruin your day All right, so what I'm doing here is just, uh, like I said, I'm using that fluid film I mentioned earlier to spray down a lot of the uh, the hardware, the springs, um, you know, some of the material that you got, that at least I got from from the e-trailer. Um, you know, it was a bare metal. I think it's coated with a very thin coat of, uh, you know, oil. Uh, you could tell that when you picked it up, but uh, you can definitely tell it's not going to last very long. So. I'm just spraying everything down with that fluid film. Like I said, it's a really good a rust inhibitor, uh, and it is designated for marine applications. So, might be something to check out if you're interested, and in, uh, something that's a little bit better than uh, WD-40. I don't have scientific results of the two to figure out which one is better, but um, I, I sort of seem to, at least over using the last year of using fluid film. I like it better than WD-40 for at least a rust inhibitor um, type of application. So I'm pretty much done here at this point. The only uh, steps to uh, um, work on is just to put the tire back. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put some grease uh, on the spindle that I had cleaned off earlier. Um, I typically use marine grease. Usually get that from uh, Amazon uh, and you can just get it in the tub. Uh, usually with repacking your bearings and and putting some extra grease on the spindle before you throw the the bearings on, you typically go through a whole spindle and, or a whole excuse me a whole um, tub of it. Um, it's just easier I think to carry. And I just carry it in the truck uh, when I tow the boat and that way I have. I have it if I need it. Um, I can sort of just, uh, you know, I also carry an extra set of bearings here again, just in, you never know and if, whatever you can do to sort of reduce something of being a bad day. If you have all the materials and, and spare parts here or there, you know, it's, it's just, just maybe it, you might lose an hour of the day, but it's not going to ruin the entire day. So like I said, I, I keep everything attached uh, with the hub assembly to the uh, to the tire or wheel assembly and just go ahead and put it on like that. Alright so here I'm just I've put on the the bearing and uh, I've put on the washer and uh, now I'm just uh, threading through uh, the nut. Alright so I'm just sort of tightening this seeing how I feel it make sure that there's a little bit of gap but still it can spin. Um, I'm not going to go through what's the proper setting. It's just you sort of get a feel for it after you do some while do several of these. There's several YouTube videos that you can watch. Finally, I'm putting on the um, the retainer uh, for the the castle uh, pin to go through to hold the uh, nut in place. This is pretty straightforward. It's basically the opposite of how you uh, remove things, and then you just put your cotter pin uh, down through the uh, down through the castle uh, castle pin retainer. Now you can see I'm getting a new new cotter pin to put through. I think I got that on. Uh, I can't remember if it was yeah I think it was uh, Amazon. It was just a set of just various sizes, real handy little box to keep. Like I said, just throw it in your truck, uh, SUV, whatever you use to tow your your vehicle, and then you have it uh, in case something happens. All right, I'm just tapping back the uh, grease cap. Uh, if you might have a, a bearing buddy, just go ahead and tap that back, back on there and seat it well. Um, then there's a rubber uh, dust shield that uh, you want to make sure you go ahead and put on and seat it correctly. Once that's done, go ahead and just uh, you know lower the uh, the trailer back to on the floor under its own weight. So jack it up, take the jack stands out, and then the job was pretty much done for me. Um, as you can see, I'm just spraying all the lug nuts, any bare components that uh, are exposed to the salt water. Um, you know, just trying to give them some extra protection, make them last a little bit longer. All right, and uh, that's it. My job is done with this side. Now it's just basically duplicating that for the other side. Um, sorry if this was a little bit long. Like I said, it frustrated me watching some of these videos and 
there was a lot of people talking, but there really wasn't a lot of work. So hopefully um, I didn't do, do, do much of that. But uh, that's the process. Uh, thanks for watching.